We have a new guest joining us on the phone line from New Delhi, senior lawyer Geeta Luthra. Thank you for joining us on Beyond Bolisban. Your first thoughts on what some people call a balanced and fair judgment, giving the 2.77 acre land to the Hindu community to build a temple and a five acre alternate land to the UP Sunni Vakf Port. Geeta Luthra. Uh, so I would only laud the judgment in the sense that there would not be any angst left with any community, the Hindus, because they feel that this is, it's their belief that this is the place where Ram was born, whether it is borne out by empirical evidence, except for the fact that there is empirical evidence that there was something below the mosque when it was built, as said by the ASI. Right. Now, meeting the requirements for a mosque, if there is alternate land which is being given, I feel that no community will have any grievance, any angst, and I feel that in those circumstances, the only aspect which I don't understand is them, the, the, the finding that Ram Lalla is not an entity by itself. That issue that it's not an entity is, well, we'll have to see the detailed judgment because deities and entities have always been held to be juristic persons. So the court must have its reasons to distinguish this aspect in this case from other cases. But otherwise, I feel it's a great judgment and it augurs well for all of us. We should all be happy, satisfied. Right. And I feel there won't be any grievance with the judgment. All right. So Geeta Luthra, senior lawyer, says it augurs well for all of us. Uh, on that note, Geeta Luthra, thank you so much for joining us uh, on the discussion. Right. So I have my colleague Jessica Taneja joining us from outside Supreme Court. And also S.N. Dhingra, a former judge of the Delhi High Court. But first to Jessica Yu. Uh, take us through the what happened moments after the Chief Justice began reading the judgment and the big takeaways from the historic Ayodhya verdict. Jessica. Well, of course, there was a celebration right outside uh, CJI's court and in, in fact, even here at the Supreme Court lawns, their chants of Jai Shri Ram and of course, uh, people celebrating and uh, uh, other people also coming in and expressing their views. Uh, it's, it's been a really long day, uh, Ramesh, so to say, because this judgment was long awaited. And, and finally, uh, there is uh, a, a, sol a solution. And we will have to see as to how this settles, because moving on, uh, this judgment can be uh, go, uh, can go up for reviews. And also, uh, after that, there is an option of curative uh, uh, petition as well. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see on how this is taken, because it's just moments uh, uh, ago this judgment was announced. And... Uh, we'll have to see how this pans out. Right, Jessica, hang in there. Uh, let me go across to another of my guests, S.N. Dhingra, a former judge of the Delhi High Court. Ms. Dhingra, thank you for joining us on Beyond Valizwana. How is this case different from the 30th September 2010 Allahabad High Court judgment? And in your perspective, would this Supreme Court verdict finally bring closure to a vexed political issue that will be hanging fire for many, many decades now? Uh, I think, uh, you see, the Allahabad High Court judgment has been set aside. And uh, the, it has been held by Supreme Court that uh, the entire land belongs to the Hindus. And uh, the judgment is not based on Hindu faith. It is based on evidence, solid evidence of the Archaeological Survey of India, which had conducted... Uh, long drawn excavation under the supervision of a judge and supervision of both the parties. Entire evidence has been documented and that evidence has, seems to have weighed upon the court that uh, yes, it, can, it was not a masjid, but it was uh, a temple of course as was being claimed by one party. And it is not based on the faith that uh, you see since Ayodhya was the birthplace of Ram, the land belongs to Ramjan Bhumi. No. The evidence the, was there 
that there was an existing temple which was uh, demolished and uh, right. mosque was made and uh, the judgment has taken that into account considered the evidence and uh, has given that in order to ensure that the other party doesn't uh, get uh, you see disappointed the formula which was being discussed right compromise formula has also been applied and uh, a piece of land has been directed to be given five acre piece of land so that a mosque can be built and to ensure that uh, the temple is not somebody's property it becomes a public uh, place the court has taken steps that uh, the right. plan should be play given and all that Justice Dingra, no. hold your thoughts. Uh, I'll just come back to you momentarily. But I have with me Justice Mukul Mudgal joining us uh, on the phone line from New Delhi. Justice Mudgal, thank you for joining us on Beyond World is One. Your thoughts, your first thoughts on this historic, much-awaited Ayodhya verdict. Many people on our show saying that it's a balanced and fair judgment. Your thoughts? I, I would totally agree with that. The, uh, and what I have gathered, look, I haven't read the judgment just now, so I'm giving you only bird rights. Right. What I have gathered is the AHSI evidence has been relied upon primarily. Second, that it is believed that the faith, uh, Hindus have a belief that Ram was born there. Thirdly, there is a finding which I saw on TV, I'm not sure, and I can't tell you exactly, that there's no uh, proof that a temple was destroyed to build the masjid. But based on this, they have said that 2.77 acres of inner courtyard and the uh, inner sanctum, sanctum sanctorum would be given to Hindus in lieu of their existing structure or what was demolished. The, uh, the, High Court has, uh, the Supreme Court has directed that five acres of land be given to the Sunni work board. Now, Justice Mudgal, yeah, your, uh, your point well taken, uh, Justice uh, Mudgal. But I have a question to ask of you. Yeah. Are, are there any legal remedies available to the aggrieved parties in this case? The legal remedies are twofold. One is a review petition, which su succeeds seldom. And one, the following that is a curative petition, which is even rarer to succeed. So I. I think this puts a quietus to the dispute. Yes, there will be dissatisfied parties, there will be satisfied parties, but in a decision, this always happens. And All right, so it, as it, Justice Mudgal, yes, yes, please. It brings a finality to the issue now, it can't be reopened, okay? Right, so as Justice uh, Mukul Mudgal saying, this brings a quietus to the dispute and it brings a finality to this much-awaited verdict as well. Right, so uh, Justice Murgal, thank you for joining us on uh, We On Bullism. Appreciate it. As Justice Murgal was pointing out, that there are two legal remedies available a review petition and a curative petition. But for all practical purposes, this is it. This brings a quietus, a finality to the Ayodhya dispute. So no, uh, no further legal action is anticipated, says Justice Murgal Murgal. All right, uh, we have uh, some more guests joining us on this special broadcast, uh, writer and author Kishwar Desai. Thank you for joining us on Beyond World is One, uh, Kishwar Desai. Your first thoughts on this much-awaited Ayodhya verdict, giving the 2.77-acre land to the Hindus to build a temple and an alternate five-acre land to the Uttar Pradesh Sunni Vakf Board. Kishwar Desai, your thoughts. Well, I think um, this is going to bring a lot of peace to the area and also because this is a very clean, clear and unambiguous verdict. It, uh, it, there is no ambiguity to it. Earlier, the verdict by the Allahabad High Court, you know, you divide it and you do this, that, that has created a lot of, uh, you know, turbulence in that area. So I think this is a very clean verdict. It should be welcomed by all. And I think it will lead to a very peaceful solution because they have given alternate land. And I think the idea that they should all be settled within three months is also welcome because this will make people satisfied and all the steps can be taken very quickly to ensure that there's peace and quiet. 
and I personally think this is an excellent verdict. Kishwa Desai, uh, uh, on, on, if we keep the legal jargon aside, would you, would you say that this judgment finally brings closure to a vexed political issue that's been hanging fire in India for many, many decades now? Absolutely. I mean, it's not just decades, I would say centuries that it has been going on. So this is really a historic judgment and everybody in this country, no matter which community, which religion, should welcome it. Because it, it does help us understand that when there is a belief, when there is a strong belief within a community of a particular religious uh, uh, sect, then we should respect it. And I think that is what the verdict has done. It has respected and also legally they have been able to prove their case. So that is excellent. I think we should all welcome it. All right. Kishwa Desai is saying that this is a historic verdict, one that will finally bring closure to a vexed political issue that's been hanging fire for many, many years now. Kishwa Desai, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond Bulletin. Appreciate it. Right, if I can go back to my colleague Jessica Taneja, who is standing by patiently outside India's top court in New Delhi. Jessica, over to your thoughts on what transpired as the judgment was being read. Give us a sense of what was happening in the courtroom, the air of anticipation, if I might put it that way, on this much awaited historic, some would say, judgment on the Ayodhya dispute. Jessica. Well, Ramesh, to our surprise, it started with a stampede and um, with bated breath, uh, you know, we, we went inside the courtroom. Uh, the judge, before pronouncing the judgment, the CJI said that it will take half an hour. All of us will have to be patient and silent at the same time. And uh, while he was reading out the judgment, of course, uh, there were very, very key, key important, uh, Im very, very important uh, points uh, that need to be taken away. And uh, to an extent uh, where... Uh, he emphasized the judge CGI on behalf of all the judges. This is was a, this was a unanimous verdict. The judge did emphasize that the judgment relied on simple, pure facts, nothing to do with uh, faith or belief, because as most people right. uh, put it out, is uh, a Hindu versus Muslim debate. The court clearly, the court clearly was of uh, of the view that this judgment has to be based on evidence, and they made it clear that this is nothing, and this is not going to draw any inference from uh, uh, the the arguments made on the basis of faith or religion. Uh, so that was one of the few key takeaways, Ramesh. Right, Jessica, hang in there. Uh, it's been exactly one hour since the five-judge bench uh, began its sitting in India's top court, Karthike. It's uh, one hour since uh, the judgment began being delivered. What's the big takeaway for our viewers? Uh, put it into context for those who might not be familiar with the legalese or the legal jargon which was read out in the Supreme Court judgment there. I think certain tenets of the Indian constitutional law, the legal laws have been upheld. So can, example, I, can, I, can I just say that, so in, in simple terms, the 2.77 acre land has been given to the Hindus to build a temple, number absolutely. one. Number two, the UP Sunni Vakf Fort has given an alternate land, a five-acre plot of land, to build a mosque. Is that is that how it uh, absolutely the transpires? disputed land rests with the Hindus? A land within the periphery, within the limit of Ayodhya municipality, which is five acres, would be given to Sunni Vakf Fort. Allahabad High Court wanted by trifurcation of the same disputed land. Supreme Court says that the disputed land belongs to. The deity. Now, under the Indian law, deity is a minor. There is a word in Hindi called Sakha, which means that any person, as a, as a major to a deity, can argue for the deity in the court. So that land belongs to Lord Ram now. It does not belong to any community. So the possession of the disputed site belongs to Lord Ram. There will be a trust which, on behalf of Lord Ram, as per the Indian law, will run the management of that land, which is charity, uh, maintenance of the structure, hygiene, pilgrims, other related uh, facilities. That will be the job of the trust. The trust would be decided and constituted by the government of India within three months. And hence, like the Rupati Trust of India, or like the trust of Vaishnu Devi, this trust would be formed, which means that the land belongs to the deity, but it is run by a trust through the government of India. So certain constitutional positions have been maintained. As Jessica said, yes, certain issues of legality has also been addressed. For example, the court has said the demolition was uh, illegal. But then I would again say that in, in this verdict, the issue of faith has also been accorded space. 
it, India is a secular country, but faith has been accorded space. And let me reiterate this point, Ramesh. Even during UPA one, when uh, when affidavit was first affidavit was filed, and there was a public hue and cry, the Congress, Manmohan Singh led government, had to withdraw the affidavit, and it had to maintain in Supreme Court of India that people of India believe that Lord Ram walked Ram Setu to rescue uh, uh, Sita from Sri Lanka. That that is the position maintained in the affidavit by the government of India in the UPA one tenure. Similarly, in this context of this historic dispute. Faith has been accorded space. It has not been disrespected. I think that's a very important aspect of this case. Also, Karthikeya, this Supreme Court judgment sets aside the 2010 Allahabad High Court judgment, which trifurcated the land into three among three parties: the Hindus, Muslims, and the Ram Lalla Birajman or the deity itself. Uh, in this case, you think this uh, the entire 2.77 acre acre land goes to the Hindus? For the purposes of building a temple, absolutely, because there is a difference in the practice of two religion, and it has been acknowledged by the verdict of the Supreme Court of India. For example, where a deity is born, the land is supposed to be sacred. It's called a sacred land. But under Islam, a mosque can be built anywhere. Mosque is a holy space. It's a place of respect where Muslims pray, where Muslims offer their prayers. But it does not make the structure holy. It does not make the land holy. That's the difference between Hinduism and Islam. And I think court has borrowed this from the earlier ruling of the Supreme Court that the place. or the birth of the deity it is considered to be sacred and it cannot be disputed the whole land has to be considered as the birthplace that is why the whole disputed area has been given to the deity lord ram and deity in indian constitution or law is supposed to be a minor that is why the deity and the management of the land of the deity would be run through a trust under the auspiceship of the government of india all right uh, hold your thoughts cards okay i am now joined by a very special guest in our studios uh, lord meghna desai Lord Meghna Desai, thank you for sparing time to be on Beyond Wall. It's been appreciated. My first question, straight up, some would say balanced, historic, fair judgment, and something which will bring finally some closure. You think? Absolutely. You know, I've I I have to boast. In 1996, I wrote an article in a mm -hmm. newspaper saying, "Listen, this is a silly dispute. We should make Ayodhya a center for all religions." Mm -hmm. You know, in Jerusalem there is a spot right. which is a mixture of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Right, right. Ayodhya should be treated like that kind of. Yes, of course, it is a blaze of. But does the this morning's judgment do that? Yes, because it says there would be a Ram Mandir and there will be a mosque mm -hmm. within within reasonable distance. Sure. Hana, uh, what we have is we have five acres because where the Babri Masjid was built. Did not have any special significance for Muslims, but the land has, whether legend, mythology, or whatever, people believe, millions of people believe that Ram Chandra Ji was born there. Why, why not respect the beliefs of those people while not neglecting the beliefs of uh, of Muslims? Right. And I think that you know, a two claims were dismissed. The the Shia and and the the Romania Khada. Listen, listen. This is this is really about this basic dispute. It's not about religious opposition. And because uh, the Hindus had been in uh, occupation, as it were, since 1949, in de facto occupation, except for the outer thing. Right. You recognize it. You know, after it is 70 years. Since 1949, mm -hmm. and you know, it's so. So I think that is a very balanced judgment <coughs> and a very difficult problem. I Indeed. must say, one of the most difficult problems India has faced. Absolutely, and you know, it is also very nice that all parties have behaved very sanely about this. And so, I, what I want to do, I really want to see Ayodhya being made a global tourism capital for religion, because India has so many religions. We should display. We should make Ayodhya a multi-religious capital, and just just you know, show the world in the it is a it is a place to come to for your for see the richness of Indian religious traditions. And I think you know that way. I'm I'm glad that uh, a the judgment was uh, was very balanced on a Saturday, you know, 
and just sort of just quickly done. And I think it's, it should be welcome, you know. Right. I mean, <coughs> this trust has to be set up and all that. Right. And uh, that will lead to party political nonsense, but there we are. But Lord Meghna Desai, the court yeah. also makes a couple of observations. One, it says, there was no proof that a temple was destroyed to build the mosque, number one. And number two, the five-judge bench also says that the demolition of the Babri Mosque mm. in 1992 was illegal. Sure. So to that extent, you think this would uh, cut ice with the, the aggrieved, so-called aggrieved parties to the dispute? Well, you know, there are two things. Uh, whatever the ASI may say, Indian archaeology has never uncovered many structures. You know, we don't have any structure in the Prasta for what the Pandavas were. I mean, how can you have, after thousands of years, everything was there? So we have no structure. And even if there was a structure, it could have been anything. As someone was saying earlier, it could have been a Buddhist temple. Right. Uh, in a, so, yes, there was a structure which was destroyed and a mosque was built, maybe. Uh, Bygones are bygones, because the mosque was not active until whatever the British time. So, because it was built by Shia, and so, you know, there's <laughs> all sorts of complications. But I think what is, what is undisputed is that the destruction of Babri Masjid was an illegal act. Right. And I take it that case is still pending before some court or other, where Advaniji, various other people are implicated. Mm -hmm. That was a communal act, there's no doubt about it. And at that time, the UP chief minister stood by, the Indian prime minister went into his puja and didn't want to know. That was a very big shock right. to the system. We have now recovered. You know, this at least is, you know, the bomb has been applied and recovered it. And although, although the, the Muslims would be still angry that that case has not been settled, mm -hmm. that was not an issue in this particular dispute. This was a land possession dispute. This is not about the destruction of Babri right. Masjid. And to that extent, giving five acres, which is what twice as much as what there was, you yeah. know, and say build a mosque, and I think they should just uh, uh, contribute uh, to building a mosque. Why sure. not? And Mandir. <coughs> Indeed. Lord Meghna Desai, hold your thoughts. Uh, I'm now joined by Justice R. S. Sodi for this uh, historic Ayodhya verdict. Justice Sodi, thank you for sparing time to be on Beyond World is One. Your first thoughts on the implications going forward of this uh, historic Ayodhya verdict. How would this verdict be seen by countries around the world uh, from a legal and political precedence or a standpoint? See, firstly, let me, let me tell you that this is not a question of victory of one side or a loss of the other side. Absolutely. It's a, declaration, it's a declaration of law as enunciated by the Supreme Court. Now, a declaration of law is this they have held that the, that the demolition itself was not a legal act and it should and therefore held it illegal. However, they have gone on to say that a temple now, as the thing stands today, a temple can be constructed uh, by constituting a trust within the period of three months. The trust must be constituted, which is also now a provision of law. Then it, they've gone on to say that since the 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 the, 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 the mosque was demolished illegally, as it were, right. Uh, the, the the state which uh, is about to compensate them in the manner that they will provide a five acre plot for the, for a, the, a building of a mosque right uh, see it again, I, I again say it is not a question of losing and winning it's a question of uh, of law taking the uh, uh, decision of a law limiting itself to bring about a situation where where uh, you can put an end to the hundreds of years of this uh, controversy, at least 70 at least. So therefore, I think it's a good judgment. And remember another thing, it is unanimous. Indeed. That is, that is what you should be all proud of. It is a very, very, it's a unanimous judgment. A, 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 a statement of law enunciated by the Supreme Court, which does not make one win or the other lose. Absolutely. Justice Sori, I was talking to Justice Mukul Mudgal a short while ago. 
And he told our viewers that uh, the so-called aggrieved parties may have two options before them. One, a review petition, and two, a curative petition. But Justice Mudgal says this judgment will bring a quietus to this dispute, bring a finality, and those two options, review petition or curative petition, may not be exercised or remain relevant going forward. Your thoughts? You know, if I were, if I were to advise the parties, which of course I am, I'm nobody to do that. I would tell them to accept this judgment as it stands. They're giving a quietus to the whole situation. And firstly, secondly, I agree with Justice Mudgal that uh, that, that, that this uh, that, that the review petition and or the curative petition, I don't think, is going to you know add any, any, any dignity to the, the warring parties. The warring parties must understand now that it is very difficult, very, very difficult for the court to have done what it has done. But, but now that is the mandate of law, kindly respect it. Justice Sodi, as somebody who has spent a lifetime in law and judiciary, how do you think this particular Ayodhya verdict will set a precedent for uh, judiciaries around the world? I mean, what kind of a precedent might they set for uh, similar disputes that may happen or may have happened in the past around the world? You know, around the world, disputes have taken place and will take place. Like, for example, in Turkey, I, I was given to understand that there was, a, there was a church which was demolished and a mosque was built over that. When the, pre the pre present uh, regime came about, or whatever happened, uh, the, uh, the Turkish people they re reinstated the church over there, and now today it's, a, it's one of the, the the greatest tourist attraction in that place. So I mean, the, you know, you can't uh, ask for judicial opinions on 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 on, on uh, uh, these kind of uh, religious things, but yes. There has to be a way out for every dispute. And it is best that it is settled quickly and within the, 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 the framework as permissible by your laws. And also talking about the five ju <coughs> Ben Justice uh, Sodi. Now, this is a historic moment in Indian jurisprudence, uh, as you would, uh, you know, as would put it. But what might have gone through the five judges, the five justices, to come to a unanimous conclusion? Give us the dynamic that was at play in the lead-up to this morning's historic judgment. You know, first thing, you, uh, all of them did not belong to one faith. If, if, if that is what everybody's trying to get at. Right. Now, they are all, all have their own different views. They, they must be worshipping in, in their own fashion, must, whatever they must be doing. But remember, all of them have come together and singularly arrived at a conclusion that the, pre that, that the present uh, uh, law permits us to diffuse the situation in this fashion and or adjudicate to arrive at a conclusion that they have taken a uh, day. Uh, it is not an easy, easy uh, thought process. It must have taken a lot of deliberations. It must have taken, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of back bending and whatever, whatever you, uh, the, we, we do when we deliver judgments. We we had the this so the, the entire uh, spectrum is open before you, and therefore to arrive at a conclusion, one has to take uh, take into consideration all. I want to say Supreme Court ne jo aaj ye faisla diya hai, wo ek aitihasik faisla hai. और इस फैसले के संबंध में मैं यह भी कह सकता हूं कि यह इतिहास का एक लैंडमार्क जजमेंट है सहज रूप से सभी को इसे स्वीकार करना चाहिए और मैं यह भी मानता हूं कि इससे सर्वधर्म संभाव की भावना भी और अधिक मजबूत होगी और साथ ही साथ सामाजिक ताना बाना भी इसके परिणाम स्वरूप मजबूत होगा ऐसा मेरा विश्वास है और मैं जनता से भी यह अपील करूंगा कि सभी शांति और सौहार्द बनाए रखने का प्रयत्न अपनी तरफ से करेंगे और इस जजमेंट को पूरे धैर्य और उदारता के साथ सभी को स्वीकार करना चाहिए यू हर्ड इंडिया होम डिफेंस मिनिस्टर राजनाथ सिंह गिविंग हिज फर्स्ट रिएक्शन ऑन द मच अवेटेड अयोध्या वर्डिक 
which has finally become a reality. And I want to thank uh, Justice R. S. Sodhi, if he is still with us. Uh, thank him for uh, joining us on the discussion. Appreciate it. All right, uh, joining me now is uh, Majid Meeman, who is on the phone line. Uh, Majid Meeman, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond World is One. I want to ask you about your thoughts on the precedent this Ayodhya verdict might set going forward. And are you, in your personal opinion or estimation, satisfied with the judgment? Well, this was long awaited uh, historical decision. And uh, we have seen the atmosphere even before the pronouncement of the judgment as to how it is going to be received. And I have said it earlier before the learned judges pronounced the judgment that it is an uh, uh, hour of uh, a historical pronouncement of a most important judgment, but also it is an hour of test of our patience, test of our restraint, and test of our tolerance. Because uh, whenever the judgment of this nature with such magnitude and such uh, hype, you know, comes out, it, if it could be in favor of one side, could be against the other side, and therefore, neither by way of celebration by those who believe that they are one, uh, nor by way of protest by those who have believed that the judgment is against them, there should be violence, there should be breach of peace. And I am happy that people all throughout, whether they are this party or that party or all litigants, etc., have received this judgment with a very uh, sober and patient way, uh, which needs to be applauded. So there is no case of a breach of peace anywhere. And I think this atmosphere should be maintained. Now, whatever the Honorable Supreme Court has said, five judges' wisdom, collective wisdom, we all need to carefully read the whole judgment and thereafter see how things go as far as the Indian society is concerned. Because any, right. uh, any, any misunderstanding between two major communities would certainly be a big impediment in the progress of the country in future. So I think it's that uh, in mind, we must take everything uh, in a right spirit right. and work out something so that there is no animosity between two major communities of the country. Right. Mr. Meeman, you are, you are a man of many parts. You wear uh, more than one hat. We have... Uh, Mr. Meeman, I'll come back to you in a moment.